Nice easy question to begin with. Give the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in an atom of the isotope iron 2655. Well the number of protons is easy enough isn't it? The number of protons is just a proton number written there at the bottom. 26. The number of neutrons, we have to remember that this number at the top called either the mass number or the nucleon number that's the number of protons plus neutrons added together. So if there's 55 protons and neutrons altogether, we already know there's 26 protons. So 55 take away 26 gives us 29 neutrons. To get the number of electrons, we've got to remember it does say it's an atom. And an atom, of course, is neutral. It's not charged. So the number of protons must be the same as the number of electrons. So that overall there's no charge. So the number of electrons is 26, the same as the number of protons. Part B is to find the, the ratio of charge over mass. Now sometimes the question tells you the units, this one doesn't. So you have to remember, charge divided by mass is going to be in units of coulombs per kilogram. Just put that as a little note to myself to remind me that I need to find the charge in coulombs and the mass in kilograms. So if we wanted to, we could do it all in one equation. But at this example, I'm going to work out the charge first and then work out the mass. So the charge, well, it's just about the nucleus. It's not about an atom. If it was about the atom, the charge would be zero. There'd be no point doing it. It's about the nucleus. So what is there in the nucleus that's got charge? Well, there's 26 protons. And if we can remember the charge of a proton, all well and good. If we can't remember the charge in a proton, we'll look at our data sheet. We'll look down the data sheet for where it says charge in a proton, and oh dear, it doesn't say it. But it doesn't matter because what it does say is the charge on an electron. The charge on an electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and we know that the charge of a proton is the same as the charge on an electron, except it's positive instead of negative. So the charge in a proton is plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So charge equals 26, that's how many protons they are, times 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, that's how much charge on one proton, which equals, let me get the calculator out, 26 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 4.16 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. So there's the charge. To find the mass, what have we got? Well, in the nucleus we've got 26 protons and we've got 29 neutrons. Now I'm going to do it the slightly long-winded way. I'm going to work it out separately using protons and neutrons separately. So, 26 protons, so the total mass is 26 times, and this is where I need the data sheet, the mass of a proton, given here, the proton rest mass, 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And added to that, 29 neutrons. So I'll look for the rest mass of a neutron on the data sheet. 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And if I add all that up, an answer of 9.21 times 10 to the minus 26. kilograms just fits in. So charge over mass is 4.16 times 10 to the minus 18 divided by 9.21 times 10 to the minus 26. So I get the calculator. 
4.52 times 10 to the 7 and the units of course are coulombs per kilogram. Now I did say I was going to do this a slightly long way around because I've treated the protons and the neutrons separately to, and then added them up to get the total mass. If we actually look at these figures, the mass of a proton 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, the mass of a neutron 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Those masses are only different in the one, two, three, the fourth significant figure. Now because we're only working to, to three significant figures with the charge, it means that we don't need to worry really about the fourth significant figure of the mass. So if we wanted to, instead of saying 26 protons and 29 neutrons, we could just have said there are 55 things in the nucleus and all 55 have a mass that's 1.67 and we ignore the last digit and it wouldn't change the answer and it would be a bit quicker to do. So part C, determine the values of A and B in the decay represented by the equation. So we've got a nucleus that's got B protons and A is the total number of protons plus neutrons and it decays and when it decays there are 26 protons and there's one positron and one neutrino so how do we work out how many protons there must have been beforehand well we can either think about when the positrons get emitted and we might know from other stuff that we've learnt that positrons are emitted when a proton turns into a neutron so that's one way of doing it, just remembering the other way is just to think about the charge on the right hand side of the equation there's 26 positive protons and there's one positive positron so there's a total of 27 positive charges on the right hand side so there must have been 27 positive charges on the left hand side so B must be 27 So one of those 27 protons turned into a neutron, which is why the number of protons went down to 26. The number A, of course, is the total number of protons plus neutrons. And we've said that a proton is turning into a neutron. So the total number of protons and neutrons doesn't change. So therefore, if you've got 55 protons and neutrons all together afterwards, we must have had 55 protons and neutrons in total to begin with, so A is 55. 